Hello my friends, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. And today I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite couples on this franchise, Emily and Kobe. Now I know you're going to be asking, why are these your favourites eBird? It begins and ends with baby Coben. Guys, I think he's quite literally adorable. So it's been a little while since we've seen this couple and quite a few things have changed. In fact, I don't know why I'm saying that, one thing has changed, they've had one more baby. They're still living at Emily's parents' house. And Emily's still nagging Kobe to within an inch of his life, so so yeah, I take that back actually, nothing's changed. But I do have to admit, when I saw their names pop up for this season of Happily Ever After, I did think, what are they going to show us? But guys, they haven't disappointed. The whole family, the whole clan, mum and dad included, are all going to Cameroon to meet Kobe's family. So guys, let's get into it. But before we do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that big red button, mark subscribe, and also don't forget to smash the like button. And if you enjoy my videos, please consider sharing on your social media. Thanks guys. Right, so without further ado, I give you Emily and Kobe. So when we first catch up with this couple, they're at home having a family meal, cooked by Emily's mum of course. And Emily and Kobe moan onto production about how hard it is not to have their own space, not to be able to walk around naked, and not to be able to do what they want because they're living with her parents. Oh Emily, let's take a moment out to imagine how hard it is for your parents. They've bought their own house and now you and your family are living in it. We're very grateful having my parents there to help with the kids, but it's pretty challenging having my parents there 24 seven because they are, you know, all up in our business all the time. To an extent, we can't really feel free as if, you know, yeah. we're in our own house. He can't walk around in his like, underwear. I love just being myself, like, you know. You like being body. naked? <laughs> really, guys? I've got a few things to add. Not to have to cook dinner, not to have to clean up after yourself, not to have to pay bills and a mortgage. Oh, good lord, guys. Emily acts as if they're holding her prisoner there. Emily, you are free to leave whenever you want. And by the look on Dad's face, the sooner the better. Anyway, the couple babble on about how they met. Kobe then says that he found the first 90 days really hard before they got married because Emily's so bossy. Guys, I'm going to stick a pin in that because this is going to come back to haunt us, I think, for the whole season. Anyway, enough of all that old shiz. Kobe's got some news. Can't wait for us to go to Cameroon and then introduce you guys to my big family. After two and a half years, me, Emily, the kids, David and Lisa are finally going to Cameroon. This will be Emily's first time. So wow, there's going to be so many firsts. The first time that Emily meets Kobe's family. The first time that Emily or any of her family have been on the continent of Africa. And the first time that Kobe's family and friends get to see the mighty Kobe under the thumb of bossy Emily. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is really worried about Emily's level of bossiness. So I've got to say, Emily does have quite a dominant personality type, but by the same token, I would also argue that Kobe has a very chilled out personality type. And so really, they are quite a good fit for each other. Does Emily need to tone it down a bit? Yeah. But guys, I have every reason to believe that this whole bossiness narrative is set to ignite the moment they set foot in Cameroon. Obviously said I'm a little bossy, so I have a fear of them thinking, you know, I'm a bit much. I mean, in Cameroon, it's very difficult to see a woman like try to stand up and challenge a husband or try to like, you know, be bossy to the husband. Like African women are very, very submissive to their men. Well, that's as may be, but Emily's not an African woman. And I doubt she's going to go changing anytime soon. <laughs> And then Emily's dad asks Kobe if there's anything that he should be worried about when they arrive in Cameroon. Uh, David, that's a question you ask before you book a ticket. It's rather too late now. Anyway, Kobe gave one of the wildest answers I think I've ever heard to that question. <laughs> he just plucked something out of thin air. Instead of saying something like, well, you can't drink the tap water. Or make sure you get your yellow fever shots before you go. Kobe says this. Whatever you do, don't do any activities on Mondays. What? Anyway, he continues. For instance, if you owned a shop and you opened it on a Monday, one of the rival factions would burn it down. Kobe! <laughs> do you want them to go to Cameroon or not? David is very, very unlikely to decide to open a shop during his four-week trip there. <laughs> So, I don't think he needs to be warned about it. 
<laughs> and they look obviously quite worried at the idea they're going to somewhere that's currently in civil unrest. Anyway, the whole family make the arduous 23 hour journey to sunny Cameroon. Emily, let the bossing begin. And so they finally arrive, and Kobe's best friend Valerie meets them at the airport. And they all hug and greet each other, and baby Scarlet jumps into Valerie's arms. And it is all quite a sweet scene. But then guys, something very strange happens. Valerie tells us that he's known Kobe for 20 years, and he recounted, when Kobe went to China, he rang me one day and said he met a white lady in a nightclub. And then he rang a few weeks later and said the white lady was pregnant and that he was going to marry her and live in America. And Valerie said, oh, well, that's not what we planned. Um, who's we, Valerie? That's very strange. And I have noticed that quite a few of Kobe's friends have a lot of ownership on him. And I've got to say, I just thought that was such a suspicious statement. And he finished off by saying he was surprised at Kobe's choice to decide to move to America and marry Emily. And I found this all very strange, and then I got to remembering. Emily told us about her first meeting with Kobe. If memory serves me correct, she said, I like black guys, and in China there's hardly any black guys. And so as soon as I saw him in a nightclub, I said, you, come over here. And I think, guys, they had sex in the toilet, from what I remember. So it's very strange that... The day after Kobe met her, he rang Valerie and said, I met a white lady in a nightclub. What are the chances that he didn't say I slept with her on night one? Of course he did. And I think that's part of the reason why all of his friends and some of his family are very suspicious of Emily. Maybe, just maybe, they think that she baby trapped him. Something to think about. I'm not saying it's correct, but hmm, my spidey senses are, are tingling. So anyway, then there was the obligatory hoo-ha at the airport. Whenever I've been to Africa, in fact, with the exception of South Africa, but whenever I've been to anywhere else in Africa, locals always try and help you with your luggage. And they always seem to want like 30 or $40 for picking up a couple of suitcases. When you give them $10, they hoo and they ha, and then they go about their business. Well, Kobe hadn't explained this all to Emily and her family, and so they were very shocked by it all. And you could see Emily's mum was, well, a little bit scared. Oh my gosh, what a circus. Is this how it is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Kobe, what were all those guys saying to you when they were all crowded around you? So they're not going to follow us, right? I mean, these no, guys in the no, it's, it ends only around here, okay. the airport. And so their first introduction to Cameroon was, how can we say, a little bit discombobulating. Anyway, the next time we see them is the following morning and they're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed after a good night's sleep. And so, in anticipation of meeting all of Kobe's family, who apparently live two hours away, they're all going to buy traditional Cameroonian outfits as a sign of respect. And so they found a store, and they all picked out outfits. They dressed David, Emily's dad, up like a native Cameroonian. <laughs> he does actually look quite good. If I were him, I would have just said, yep, I only want to be the chief, I want to be the leader. <laughs> just for the jokes. Uh, start pulling faces. It would be funny, you know it would. And so they all get decked out in their Cameroonian outfits, and off they go to see Kobe's family. And when they arrive, Kobe's whole family are outside waiting for them, and they're all colour-coded in blue. And they give them a very warm and effusive welcome. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so then they were treated to a welcome dance, and Emily got involved as well. But it's when they went into the house that they were hit with a bombshell. They all sat down for a meal, and Kobe's dad explained to Kobe that since he didn't really recognise American weddings, he planned to rustle up a wedding of his own whilst they're out there. Wait, what? Aren't they only out there for like three weeks or something? Do I need to plan it? Like, do I do anything or no? So we still have to sit and fix a date. To when? I know we don't have enough time, but we'll try as much as we can just to make sure the event takes place. Oh, good Lord, this really is going to be a 90 Day Fiancé wedding, bodged together at the last minute. <laughs> Emily seems somewhat perturbed. And she said, what do I have to do? Emily, pretty much the same as you did with your own wedding, next to nothing. But I guess at least she'll have one wedding where she hasn't got a secret pregnancy. Anyway, the following day, back at the hotel, 
They discuss this wedding with Kobe and it turns out Emily's family have to cater the wedding for 100 people. They have to do the food, guys. That goes on, we bring like a drink and then you guys will prepare like food. So we have to prepare food? Prepare food for us. Why don't we make traditional American food? Guys, that's most of the wedding. Most of the cost of any wedding is the bloody food. And most of the ag and the hassle with any wedding is the food. Oh dear, oh dear, this isn't going to be a relaxing holiday at all. And then they discuss the dowry that Kobe's parents have to pay for Emily before the wedding. They talk goats, sheep, cows, yada yada yada. Just be grateful guys that you're not being asked to provide the goats and sheep and cows. But I definitely have questions about this whole knock door situation. It feels to me like I am giving them my daughter in trade for goods. Nothing about that feels right to me. Oh, Emily's mum, wait to see how much she get for her first. You never know. With the right breeding plan in place, you could be eating curry goat every day for the next 40 years. And then you'll change your mind. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. And guys, I've just had another thought. For Emily's dowry, they should demand a couple of cows, a couple of sheep and a couple of goats. And then they can use those animals to feed the 100 for the wedding. Guys, <laughs> no need to thank me. It's just what I do. Problem solved. So next time we meet up with Kobe, he's in the barbers having his hair done. And in walks Valerie. Oh Lord, let me get my freaking coat. And it would seem Valerie's brought another friend for support. So first up, they just simply ask him how he thinks things are going. And guys, I want you to listen to this because Kobe, at the start of the holiday, this is the way that Kobe sees the relationship. I met Emily and I took a gamble on that and I feel like that was the best decision I ever made. Like, look, we are here today, we got two beautiful kids and I mean, we're happy. And so there, it's unequivocal. Kobe says he's happy with Emily. He feels like he made the right choice. And I've got to say, as a family, I think they're absolutely a beautiful little family. Is Emily a bit bossy? Yes, she is. Does that make her the devil? Apparently so. And then one of his friends said the following to production. When have you come and get to meet a Western woman? I always think they're unhappy in relationships because our cultures are really different from our own cultures. Because in Africa, the women have to be submissive to us. But I you know over there, it's not the same. Everybody has equal rights. And when you can maybe express your right of being a man as an African, I think you're not happy. Uh, wait, what? So women aren't just naturally submissive to you? You have to deny them their equal rights to make it so. Do you not hear what you're saying, sir? But I've got one more thing to add. As globalisation takes over and everybody's watching the same TikToks and the same YouTube and we're all on the same internet, women in other parts of the world are beginning to realise, wait, what? There's somewhere I can go to get equal rights. In fact, why don't I just stay here and push equal rights forward where I am? Guys, don't look round, because Equal Rights is about to tap you on the shoulder, and when you turn round, it will punch you right between the bloody eyes. But then Kobe did admit that Emily is naggy, and I don't dispute it, she kind of is. But just because somebody nags, guys, you can't deny them their human rights. <laughs> it's bloody unbelievable. But Kobe's friends haven't finished yet. They then let us know that in Africa, when you get home from work, you have your dinner cooked and your bath ran. And guys, I think they're getting things a bit confused here. Just because some people nag doesn't mean they don't know how to cook or run a bath. I don't know how the two are connected. Emily's a stay-at-home mum and I'm fairly sure once she moves out of home, she'll be doing the cooking and the cleaning and Kobe will be out at work all day. But Kobe's friend finished up by saying, well, we know lots of people that have moved to America and 90% of them, they're not happy. So, and, you're in Cameroon, my love, and you're as miserable as sin. But the final word, well, that goes to Kobe. First he said, I don't know why you're so worried. I'm happy, why can't you just be happy for me? And then he said this. I love Emily and I don't expect her to change. But I'm really hoping that during this trip, Emily will give a good impression in front of my friends. And guys, I think that's fair. That's what I've always really liked about Kobe. He's very measured, very level-headed and he's very fair. And so that's where we end things for this week. And so what does the eBird make to all of this? Well, I've got an awful lot to say, as I'm sure you can imagine. So first up, I want to discuss Emily's parents. I love the fact that they embrace the Cameroonian clothes, but I also like how open they are. 
the communication between them and Kobe and the relationship, I think is lovely. When they were a bit worried about what was happening at the airport, they didn't shy away from the issue. And so I really like that ease of communication with this group. And also when Emily's mum had a problem with the whole dowry issue and bequeathing goats and cows for Emily's hand in marriage. I like the fact that she's able to say, well, I'm not 100% sure about this. I saw a lot of people on social media saying, oh, she's so out of order. She doesn't understand Cameroonian culture. No shit, Sherlock. She's from Kansas. Why would she? She's not saying that she's not going to do it. She's just saying it feels a bit weird to her. And that's her right. And just as Kobe had to learn about American culture, she and David are learning about Cameroonian culture. In fact, the whole family are learning each other's cultures real time. There are always bound to be a few things that you think are weird about somebody else's culture. But you know what? It's good to talk. And so on to Kobe. He's very open with his thoughts and feelings and he freely admits to production that he thinks that Emily is very bossy. Well, in fact, Emily admits that she's very bossy. You know what? She is very bossy. However, Kobe says he's very happy with Emily and he feels as if he's made the right choice. And so that's why I think it's very rich for Kobe's friends to pipe up and say Emily's too bossy, this relationship can't work because thus far they're very happy together and both parties say that and there have been no major problems yet. And poking your nose in where it's not needed in a nutshell is the major problem that I have with Kobe's friends. Now a lot of you are going to think Ebert dislikes their point of view and you're right, I do. You know about the role of men and the role of women. But here's my take on the whole issue. You pick the right spouse or the right partner for you. So if you want somebody submissive, go and find somebody submissive. If you're a woman who wants to have a provider, then go and find a provider. And as long as each person in the relationship are happy with their roles, then there's literally no problem. And so the major issue that I have is when outsiders come in and they say, here's how it works in my home. And here's how I think it should work in your house. So I feel as if Kobe's friends are trying to antagonise the situation and wind Kobe up a bit, telling him, your wife's not a good wife because she's not submissive enough. And a wife should be submissive at all times. Uh, your wife should be submissive. Kobe doesn't require that. If he did, he wouldn't be within a country mile of Emily. So Kobe's friend Valerie is a particularly slapworthy individual. And he, by his own admission, has been watching American movies. And from these movies, he's extrapolated how all American women behave. Well, you're very wrong about that, Valerie. Let me introduce you to trad wives. And for anyone who doesn't know what a trad wife is, I'm going to put a link in information and you can have a look for yourself. But anyway, yeah, I firmly believe that in a relationship, the very worst thing that can happen is friends in your ear telling you, don't put up with this, or you shouldn't be accepting of that, when it's something that you hadn't previously considered, or something that just doesn't bother you. The internet is full these days of people saying, he should be buying you a Birkin bag, she should be washing your feet every evening. We live in a world of tropes and stereotypes, and I don't know, it's a lot. I guess what I'm saying is if you want a certain thing, go out and find it, but there is no one size fits all. Everyone's got their own opinion. And you're all entitled to mine. <laughs> okay, rant over. So guys, I would love to know what you think in comments down below. Please drop the eBird a line and let me know, are you a traditionalist? Are you a feminist? Or do you believe like I do? There are 8 billion people in this world. Find one who fits with your belief system. Anyway guys, I'm going to get on with my next video. And thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you soon. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day. Baby, you give me midnight up. You whip up my appetite. Don't leave me here high and dry.